everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca and this is my vlog slash sewing slash craft channel, all of these things and more. <laughs> so today I'm going to be walking you through everything that I made this winter, which includes the items that you see behind me. Some of them got videos, some of them didn't. And then also another little cute thing that I also made this winter, which I'm super excited to show you. So, okay, I'm not typically a big fan of winter sewing just because I find it not as exciting and definitely more time consuming depending on the project. I really prefer to make like frilly dresses and things like that. So this year I really decided to challenge myself more and make more things along the lines of coats and pants. And I did also still do a little bit of frilly stuff. So let's start off with the first thing that I made this winter. So the first item we have is the Wixton unfolding jacket, which was previously known by a different name and the pattern has actually been discontinued. So you won't be able to buy this pattern, but I already had it from the first time that I bought it. So I just decided to make another one. It didn't really Really feel that challenging at all to make it a second time. I think the only thing that was difficult was the fabric. So this is like a teddy fabric that I got from Joanne. It's like a mustard color and it has a little bit of a stretch in it, which I didn't really account for. And so there were some places where it just like pulled. Let's see where I can find it. Maybe it's... Oh yeah, here, you can kind of see, okay, you can't see it all, but anyway, there were some places that it pulled where it wasn't supposed to just because the, the fabric does have a stretch that again, I didn't really think about. But the lining is this really beautiful desert print lining that I have been saving for years and just didn't really know what to do with it. I made a couple masks with the fabric, um, but other than that, I really didn't know what to do. And I'm really, really happy that I decided to do this. It's sort of an homage to my home. I am from Tucson, Arizona, where all of these plants grow natively. So it was really fun to sort of I don't know, make this beautiful coat in remembrance of my home. And it basically is a blanket, except it's a jacket. Like that is exactly what this is to me. I When I set out to make this, I wanted a jacket that felt exactly like a blanket. I wanted it to feel like a warm hug every time I wore it. And this jacket is so warm that I almost couldn't really wear it that much because it was that warm. So really good on me because I live in a very cold place. <laughs> I think that it's very beautiful in that way, but I don't think it's necessarily like mega fashionable, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, the next item is the Anthea blouse by Anna Allen Clothing. And I really, really love Anna Allen's designs. She has a few pretty iconic designs such as the Pomona pants and the Persephone pants and the Anthea blouse. And I think that this is such a beautiful top. It was made from, I made it from just some quilting cotton. So it's nothing like special as far as the fabric goes, but it's a really good project for quilt cotton. So if you have that just like lying around, it's definitely a fun option for that. I did hack it to have a gathered section down here. So it is actually just a button down shirt with puff sleeves, but I hacked it both times I made it. So I did make another one, I'll show you in a second, but this one was more of an experiment to see how the hacking would go. And the second time I made it, I was much more confident about all of it. So yeah, I just really love this. It's like a relaxed fit. It's really, really cute. And I just feel very stylish whenever I wear it. It was probably the first time that I've ever made buttonholes and felt really confident about it because my machine has an automatic buttonhole foot, which is honestly the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> that thing has made me feel so much more confident in my sewing abilities. Actually, just my new sewing machine in general has made me feel so much better about my sewing abilities because all the times that my, like I would have issues, I realized it was my sewing machine that was giving me problems. It wasn't even necessarily me not having the skills. It was my sewing machine just being outdated and unable to keep up. So once I updated my machine a year ago in February, my sewing journey has just like skyrocketed and I feel like I've been able to do so many new things and try out new techniques that I would have been really scared to do before, such as these buttonholes. So yeah, it has really cute puffy sleeves and I'm just super obsessed and love this dress or love this shirt so much. Okay, so I loved it so much that I had to make a dress version. So this is my blush linen Anthea dress hack and I did another gathered piece. So again, the dress version is just a longer version of the shirt, but with the way that I hacked it, you know, it's just a longer version of the shirt with a gathered piece here. And it was another round of using the buttonhole foot and it went really well. Like I'm super, super proud of this. Um, I think that, well, it fits me really nicely. The sleeves are really beautiful. Like I think my gathering 
looks pretty good, honestly, very even. And my favorite thing about this dress is not something that you would really notice initially, but I decided to do a really cute little heart hem and it's a little um, nod to Valentine's Day because I made this as a Valentine's Day dress and I think it looks really cute with like black tights and a pink or red beret or black beret, whatever it may be, but I wore it on Valentine's Day and I was super proud of it. And I just really, really love this pattern. It's very, very easy to use. Um, it's basically just your fabric plus a piece of interfacing and some buttons and that's it. It's just very simple and very elevated. I think it looks just so cool. I'm definitely gonna be making more versions of this. And it does have a very relaxed fit, as you can see. And I think in a future version, it would be really nice to add like waist ties or something like that, or maybe extend the button placket down a little bit more and just pull it in so that it is a little bit more fitted. I'm not exactly sure. Like, I think it'd be cool to have the button placket all the way down to the bottom of the skirt and still do the gathered skirt, but have the buttons go all the way down to the bottom um, so that it can be more fitted because I love a flowy and puffy dress, but also I love when you can see the shape of my body in the clothes. And oftentimes when I make a clothing piece, it's not really something that's super like body forming, um, which isn't a bad thing. It makes it a lot easier for me to do fitting, uh, but I also would like to challenge myself more and do more fitted garments in the future. Okay, speaking of challenging garments, this is my Betsy Utility Jacket by Lydia Naomi. And this jacket was a big process. And if you watch my channel, you've probably seen the video where I took you through the process of making this. It was about two weeks long because I wanted to make it slowly. I didn't want it to feel like I was just like rushing through it. Um, and I definitely took my time and I'm really proud that I did that because I'm very, very satisfied with the results. So this is a boiled wool, like I think the, the color is called latte and I got it from Blackbird Fabrics. And I just feel really, really proud of this jacket because it is the most intricate garment I think I've ever made. And with that came a ton of frustration, but also a ton of learning. And I think that's what counts, is that I learned something really awesome. The most challenging part of this entire jacket is definitely this sleeve vent right here, which I don't even know if I care like that much about it, but it was very difficult and I'm really proud of myself that I did it. But I feel like if I was ever to make this again, I would omit that if possible. I don't even know if it's possible, but it just caused me a lot of issues and I just don't know if it's worth it. I don't know, but it is a cool detail to have this here. Like I feel like, a fashion person that I made this, you know? I don't know, I, I'm really proud of it. I think it's really cool. Um, but something that is a little funny and like the little mistakes on the coat is the, the sleeves, as I mentioned, the sleeves were the hardest part of all of it. And so I forgot to mirror the sleeves when I made it. So I just made two of the same side of the sleeve. So the seam right here, which is supposed to line up with the yoke in the back is actually in the front because um, yeah, I just didn't think about mirroring the sleeve. And then it was also my first time ever sewing on a collar, which it sort of ended up being a little wonky because as you can see, the collar pieces don't touch each other. So it should look like this, but for some reason mine does not. And I still have not figured out exactly why, but I don't know. <laughs> it's just kind of quirky and I don't think that it's really that big of a deal because I'll probably really never wear this coat completely buttoned up like this. I mean, maybe I will, but even if I did, I don't think anybody would notice. Um, also, I made it a little bit oversized so that I could wear like something a little bit bulky underneath it, like maybe like a little sweater or something. But anyway, it's really cute. I'm super proud of it. Let me show you the inside really quick. It has bias tape to close up the seams and then a really pretty like gold silky material in the sleeves, which is so nice. It makes putting on the jacket with another item, like if I was wearing a shirt or something, well, I would always be wearing a shirt with the jacket, but anyway, it makes it really easy just to slip my arms inside of the sleeves. Okay, and this is what I'm considering my last winter make, and it is a pair of Pomona pants. So these are another make by Anna Allen clothing and I really love the Pomona pants. I've made Pomona shorts before, which is the same pattern, just cut into shorts. <laughs> and I really, really love these. As you can see, I have been wearing them. They are linen. I got this linen from Blackbird Fabrics. I think it's like an oatmeal color. Um, and I really love them. I think they're just really awesome pants that I can wear 
all the time. I can wear them lounging. I could maybe dress them up and wear them out. Um, they are a wide leg pant. So, I mean, the wide leg is definitely like pretty big. There's also a tapered version of the pattern, which I will probably make in a like warmer tone because this like tannish color is very cool toned and I tend to enjoy more warm tones. So if I can find like a warm color linen, like this similar colorway, but maybe a little bit more warm, that would be ideal. And I would probably make another pair of pants, but the tapered version, um, I feel like the tapered version would be a little bit better for like out and about wearing, but I really love linen pants. Just, I really love linen in general because it is so breathable. Like basically anytime I wear linen to bed, I don't get hot, I don't get overheated. I tend to sleep kind of hot once I'm already asleep. And with like all of my pajamas that are cotton or something like that, um, I tend to overheat. I do have a pair of bamboo leggings from Cozy Earth that are amazing and I never get hot in those either. So I feel like linen and bamboo just have really awesome qualities to keep you nice and cool as you are sleeping. And that's why I really love these. And they are an elastic waist. It's a two inch or no, no, two or three inch. No, I think it's a two inch elastic waist. And I really think that that's a nice, like that that's a nice size for a waistband. It looks really cute and I'm just really proud of it. And also I will say, I did not pre-wash these before I put them, like before I made them. So when I put them in the washer, um, they did shrink. So that really sucked, but they, they were actually a little bit too big for me when I was done making them. The waistband was a little bit big, but as soon as I washed it, they tightened right up and now they fit me great. They did lose some length. Unfortunately, they're more like capris. Like they go to like the top, like maybe like an inch above the top of my ankle, which isn't necessarily ideal but it's not a deal breaker for me like I'm still gonna wear them I'm still going to use them all the time I find them to be just like so comfortable and as I said perfect for around the house and the length is pretty good for like a summer pant as well like you probably wouldn't want to wear like really long pants in the summertime and so I find that to be a like silver lining in all of this is that even with the shrinkage they're still like perfectly adequate to wear which I'm really happy about so definitely make sure that you pre-wash your fabric if you are sewing clothes because yeah fabric can still shrink like it hasn't been pretty shrunk most of the time like a lot of clothes that you buy are so anyway there we go so the last thing that I have to show you is not a clothing item but it is these little bunnies oh my gosh they are so cute this was low-key like a very um, intense obsession for a couple of weeks I made four bunnies I made like I don't know three or four pairs of overalls which are these overalls right here one dress and I am absolutely obsessed. I haven't finished sewing on the ears for this one, so they're kind of just pinned on there, but this is going to be going to my mother-in-law, so I've got a little bit of time, but I did actually make these for my friends who were having babies, just as a little surprise, because I wanted to make them anyway, and I was like, well, do I wanna have like, <laughs> all of these little stuffed animals just around my house like I don't have kids this might be weird so I found my friends being pregnant as an, a good opportunity for me to try making these and I did crochet this little hat for it it doesn't look incredible like the top is a little bit wonky and it was too big so it has a pin in the back right now um, but that's okay it's really not a big deal this one is going to be mine this was the first one that I made and it's made out of um, white linen and then these ones are actually made out of scraps like this one right here is made out of scraps from my Pomona pants. So yeah, I just, everything that I've ever made for these has been made from scraps. So all the clothing, all the bunnies themselves were made from scraps, which I think is so cool to know that I can make something like this. Like I can make a full on toy out of scraps. I just think that is the coolest thing to think and like to know. And I don't know, it's just, it's really cool to be able to use my scraps in fun ways because I have like an entire duffel bag of scraps that I I had no idea what to do with and it was just sort of piling up and I'm not saying that I'm going to be like making these all the time now, but it has inspired me to like find ways to use the scraps. Um, even if it is, you know, making a ton of bunnies and I don't know, I'm not going to be selling them. So, you know, not that I think anybody's going to ask, but I did have a few messages on Instagram asking if I was selling these, I'm not selling them. Um, but if you want to make one for yourself, you can head over to the link in the description box. I will link all these patterns down below so that you can shop them. The pattern maker for these, it's called, they're called bond patterns 
patterns and they do approve you to sell them on a small scale in your shop. So maybe I'll see if I can find any shops selling these little bunnies. And if you want to buy one, you can, but also if you want to just buy the patterns, you can do that too. I would really suggest maybe buying the pattern if you have sewing experience. It's really easy. Like honestly, there's no intense or difficult techniques. Um, you're obviously sewing a lot of curves because you got the feet, you've got like its little body curve right there. Um, you've got the ears. And then I think honestly, the hardest part of all of it is sewing on the head. Like the heads of mine, the, the back of the neck really does not look good on any of them, but that's okay. <laughs> it's a homemade toy. And so what can you really expect? Like it's not gonna be perfect. Um, and I'm, I'm okay with that. And I think everyone else is too, because they're so cute, aren't they? So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I, as I said, I will have all of these patterns linked down below. If I can find any sources for the fabric that I used as well, I will link that down below. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate you watching and hope that you were inspired. Maybe for next year, you're going to bookmark a few of these patterns. Um, I know that the Pomona pants and the Anthea blouse dresses, you could definitely make as summer makes. So the only like true winter makes were the two coats at the end. Let me know what patterns you're going to be checking out for this summer. I definitely have a lot of sewing plans this summer, but I'm going to be taking my sewing machine to get serviced for, and I think it's like a 10 day waiting period. So I'm kind of sad that I have to give my machine away for 10 days but it'll be good because after i made this coat my sewing machine is just like full of wool debris it's just insane how much like little pieces of wool i'm like finding stuffed in my machine so it really needs a professional cleaning um also your reminder to get your machine professionally cleaned at least once a year so that it can get oiled and cleaned and stay working for you um, long term because sewing machines are a huge investment and it's kind of like getting the oil changed on your car like you need to do it right <laughs> it's not fun but you definitely need to do it so find a local sewing shop that you know, services your brand and see how much better your machine works after it's been serviced. If you wanna follow me on Instagram for updates on my makes, you can follow me at De La Creations. I post a lot of progress shots and I showed a lot of the process of making these little bunnies. And it's just really fun to hang out with you guys over there and just like get inspired. Instagram is honestly the number one place where I get inspired for my sewing. It's where I find literally every single pattern that I've ever done. <laughs> so yeah, I think that it's a really awesome tool to use to get inspired and learn from other people because there's so many people sharing awesome wisdom over there and I think you'd like it. <laughs> okay, I will see you next time. Bye.